Hey everybody, it is David Schmidt and I uh, want to take a moment and thank Onyx Cole and Steve Merritt and Gina Merritt for inviting me on this call today uh, to be able to have some time with you and talk to you about how we are beings of light. Uh, first, I'd like to take the time to wish you all a very happy new year and uh, healthy, safe, and successful year ahead in 2023. Um, I'd also like to recognize the uh, amazing job that Onyx, Steve, and Gina did in 2022. Uh, we've had the best growth ever in the United States uh, in 2022 that we've ever had. And uh, that is because of the direct uh, leadership of Onyx, Steve, and Gina. They've done an absolutely phenomenal job at building the market in the United States. And I know we're looking forward to uh, many great things ahead in the coming year. So many thanks to them and uh, many thanks to all of you who are part of their team and uh, bringing LifeWave out to millions of people, uh, not only in the US, but around the world and uh, improving people's lives one life at a time. So uh, let's take a moment and talk about this subject that we are not just simple bodies built on biochemistry. From the time that we're very young, we are indoctrinated into this idea that we have to take some kind of pill um, in order to improve our health. Now, there's certainly nothing wrong with vitamins and, uh, and getting great solid nutrition. We need that and we should supplement where necessary. But in the case of pharmaceuticals, uh, these are not things that we wanna live off of. Uh, maybe it's okay to use pharmaceuticals in an emergency that's a choice that every individual uh, might have to make, but we don't want to depend on drugs to uh, support our blood pressure or health of our liver or anything else for that matter. We wanna look at natural options and, uh, and choices. And so when we are on this path to looking at how we can improve our health, we should stop and think for a moment, how does the body really work in the first place? Well, as it turns out, it is the uh, biophysics of the body, the bioelectrical and biomagnetic systems that control the biochemistry. So while we can certainly improve our health with proper nutrition and exercise, drinking plenty of water and taking uh, health supplements where needed, what's really orchestrating everything in the body is an energetic system of energy production and communications. And so if we can understand how this works and how we can tap into it, then we can create technology to improve our lives more quickly and effectively than ever before and do it in a manner that is safe and that works in harmony with the human body. So we're gonna be exploring that over the next few minutes. So let's take a look at it. So we're gonna to talk today about how we are beings of light, how we are made up of energy. And this is not going to be anything esoteric. This is gonna be rather hardcore into the science behind how the energetic systems control everything that goes on in the body. Now, as a frame of reference, X39 and our other LifeWave patches use very low levels of light to cause biochemical changes in the body. So X39 and LifeWave is a form of light therapy. The way X39 works is that you apply the patch to a point on the body, such as behind the neck or below the belly button, and the patch is gonna stimulate the skin 
with very low levels of light in the infrared and visible spectra. In uh, science, this is known as photobiomodulation. And the common example of this is that sunlight causes the body to make vitamin D. You go out in the sun and UV light causes the body to make melanin. Give us a tan. Melanin is an antioxidant. So there's many examples of how light causes the body to change the biochemistry. And it, it doesn't just stop with those examples. So it is actually remarkable the depth at which the body uses energetic systems to control the chemistry. The DNA itself, which is a helical coil, which can controls and contains magnetic fields, it emits highly coherent pulses of light, uh, very similar to what a laser light would be like. And it does this for communication. So in other words, a pulse of light comes out of the DNA, and this causes a biochemical change in the body. The cell membrane contains fats, uh, and this, and of course, fat is an insulator. And the cell membrane separates charges. So we get positive on one side, negative on the other. And this separation of charges creates a total net charge around the cell membrane. What does that mean? It means that the cell manipulates electrical charges uh, through electrolytes like uh, calcium, potassium, magnesium, sodium. And then in effect, the cell functions as a, like a battery or a capacitor, it holds a charge. So we can describe our cells as being a living battery or a living capacitor storing electrical energy. In electronics, we have something called an inductor and an inductor is simply a coil of wire. And the inductor holds a magnetic field. And this is used in electronics in timing circuits, amongst other things. And the DNA is a helical coil and it's able to hold and discharge a magnetic field, which is useful for a number of things. It's used in cell replication among other things. So one of the most important things that cells do, uh, do, which is divide and make new cells, part of that process is controlled by magnetic fields. The body uses light and bioelectrical current to send information in the body. Now, we use our brains to think about moving our arms or our hands, and that's from an electrical impulse traveling from the brain through the nervous system to cause very, very rapid muscle contractions throughout the body in the arm, the forearm, the hands that creates this movement. The meridians in the body don't work on the bioelectrical system at all. They, instead, they conduct infrared light and they conduct the infrared light through electrolytes in collagen threads or collagen fibers throughout the body. So our bodies literally have fiber optic cables that are composed of collagen protein and electrolytes. And this is part of our information system. As a matter of fact, the fiber optic system that we have in our bodies is much, much faster than the electrical system in our nervous system. And uh, this was measured by Joey Jones, a biophysicist in uh, California. Um, using what's called the squid magnetometer, we can measure enormous magnetic fields around the heart and around the head. And in fact, in healers uh, that practice hands-on healing, Qigong healers, quantum touch healers, the magnetic fields in their hands are thousands of times stronger than an average person. 
So these are some practical examples of how the energetic system in the body is having an enormous impact on who we are. Okay, let's talk for a moment about Fritz Pop because he is the one that discovered that all living cells and that human beings, human cells emit light. And these are highly coherent pulses of light that come from the DNA. So in other words, if you take a room that is completely dark and you use uh, what's called a photomultiplier tube, you are able to see these light emissions coming off of cells and coming off of the human body. So essentially, Fritz Pop discovered that we are beings of light. Let's take a look at that for a moment. I have a uh, link here that you can uh, take a look at if you want to read a little bit more about this. But Fritz Pop should win a Nobel Prize. Uh, he's no longer with us, unfortunately. Uh, but he should win a Nobel Prize for this discovery. So it's uh, excellent reading. And as you can see here, it's a uh, very, very short read. All right. So uh, what do these emissions of light do, the biophotons? So first of all, uh, it's important to know that you need special equipment to detect this light emission uh, because it's so low. And this is one of the reasons why the patches work so well, because the patches use very low levels of light that mimics the way the human body emits low levels of light. So in this study that I wanted to show you, what was significant about this is that this study is uh, came to the conclusion that light has the potential to be the future of medicine. In other words, um, if we could find a way to use light to trigger very specific biochemical changes in the body, that this could obviate the need for some pharmaceutical drugs, maybe all pharmaceutical drugs. Uh, but this again is worth, uh, is worth reading because it shows exactly the potential of light therapy and where this can all go. Okay, so what else do we know about this? Well, uh, what's important to know is that there is equipment that measures all of this. They're called photomultipliers. And let's see, uh, sorry, the image was not on this study. It's gonna be in another study that I'll show you. Uh, but what was important here is that this is going through and looking at the range at which uh, light emission has been detected off of the human body and when, or what are some of the more prominent wavelengths of light. And uh, as it turns out, human beings emit light not only in the infrared and the visible spectra, but all the way up to the uh, UV spectra as well. So uh, this is important because it means that we have a number of targets that we can look at for how exactly we might heal a specific condition. So what Fritz Pop was looking at is what wavelengths of light do cancer cells emit versus a healthy cell and then how could we use that information to turn a cancer cell back into a healthy cell or just simply turn the cancer cell off completely? Now, we're gonna take a look at this one. Here is uh, an example of what a study uh, looks like when we're taking a person, putting them in a room that's completely dark and then we are measuring the light emission off the body. What does that actually look like? So here was a study that was doing that. Yeah, and here's the one here that I wanted to show you. So uh, we've done a number of different uh, tests 
looking at biophoton emission, and we actually put a person's hand into a dark room instead of the entire body. There's a number of advantages of doing that, but this is what the, the setup would look like. The room has to be completely dark so we can isolate the biophoton emission. Um, but this, again, is a really nice article because it gets into the science of how all living creatures are going to emit very low levels of light. And we can study this and look at exactly why uh, these light emissions are important and how it controls the chemistry. Okay, now we did a study with uh, Dr. Carl Marritt and Dr. Gaetan Chevalier. Uh, this is on the LifeWave website. And uh, there are a couple things about this. So basically we took people, we applied the energy patches to them and we recorded light emissions off of their hand. And there were a number of things here that we noticed. Uh, but the bottom line is that statistically significant results were obtained uh, that indicated that the energy patches do generate measurable, cha measurable changes in biophoton emission and the energetic system of the body. So in the interest of time, we're not gonna go through that now, uh, but if you wanted to look this up, you simply go to the um, science section of the website and uh, you would see this study here. Uh, by Dr. Gaetan Chevalier, uh, Dr. Carl Marit. And it, it is a uh, very lengthy study with a ton of data. And you can go through it and it describes the experiment and how all this was done. Okay, now next thing uh, that I wanna cover here is, so some of you may be unfamiliar with this concept of how the body uh, uses light for communication, but something that we'll probably all readily accept is that the body uses electricity or bioelectrical energy or bioelectrical flow of energy. And um, so this is, again, just another proof that the body is composed of energy and it's used for uh, controlling systems. So this here is from the University of Maryland and uh, opening statement, electricity is everywhere and even in the human body. And uh, our cells are specialized specifically for this. In other words, it's not an accident that our cells have an electrical charge. It's there for a reason. We need the electrical charge to be healthy. As a matter of fact, when our cells shrink through aging or when we become sick, they become more susceptible to disease because the electrical charge on the cell has diminished. So if we want to improve our health, we improve the health and vitality of the cell by increasing the electrical charge around that cell. Now, an interesting area of research is, okay, if the cells have an electrical charge, is there, what if we use a flow of electrical energy? Could we improve the function of the cells? And uh, the answer to that, as it turns out, it's yes. So this study gets into uh, exactly that question. So uh, basically what this study suggests is that if we use an external electrical field, uh, we can improve the health of cells. Now we do that, by the way, with all of our LifeWave patches. The LifeWave patches like X39 stimulate the skin with light, and this causes an increase in the electrical charge of the cell. So you don't need to use a piece of electronic equipment to do that. Now, what are some of the other effects we might be interested in? Well, what about the brain and the heart? Uh, the brain obviously uses electrical signaling, and when we have an electrical field in the brain, we also have an electromagnetic field. This is basic physics. So uh, in this study, we look at specific brain electromagnetic fields, and uh, there's some interesting conclusions here. But the main thing that I wanted to bring up is that um, 
electromagnetic fields in the brain can be measured at a distance. So what does this suggest? We know that magnetic fields travel over a distance. They decrease with uh, the square of the distance. But since electromagnetic fields in the brain contain information, maybe this explains how some people can know what another person is thinking. These magnetic fields radiate. So there's something to this phenomena of, let's say, mind reading, or maybe even telekinesis, maybe a scientific basis for that. So the brains are magnetic. And what else might we learn about the brain in this regard? Well, one interesting thing is that there are certain regions of the brain that are more magnetic than others. And it's because our brains contain magnetite, which is a mineral, it's iron oxide, and it's a magnetic material. So here was a study that was taking a look at this and doing a scan and actually mapping the regions of the brain that had a very intense magnetic fields. So this is something that is no longer speculation. Um, the human brain is using magnetism and uh, it's using the magnetism to detect the very minute magnetic field of the earth, much in the same way that birds, for example, uh, use magnetic fields of the earth to guide them uh, in the change of seasons. So human beings apparently have this latent ability as well. And here's another study that in fact is, uh, is taking a look at exactly that. So it begs the question, if human beings have the ability to detect Earth's magnetic field, which is uh, less than one gauss, it's extremely minute magnetic field, uh, what else is the human brain capable of? It's fascinating. None of this is happening because of the biochemistry. It's because we are energetic beings, because of the electrical, magnetic, and light systems of the body. All right, let's take a look at one more. And, uh, you know, we talked about the brain. Let's talk about the heart. And uh, I thought you might find this interesting because uh, this is coming from a great organization called HeartMath. I uh, met with them many, many years ago uh, when we were first getting started. And uh, if you're interested in learning about the influence of the energy field of the heart relative to the health and function of the human body, our emotions, our well-being, this would be a great resource. You can see here, though, that the electrical field of the heart is about 60 times greater than the electrical field of the brain. So that gives you an idea about the influence that the heart has on the body. So when we think about what the heart actually does, uh, most of the energy in the heart, by the way, is used to warm the blood. We know the heart is a pump, but it goes much farther beyond that. In other words, the energy field that's being produced by the heart has an influence over our emotions and responds to our emotions. So for example, in this article, we can see how the heart connects people that when we feel anger, when we feel love, our heart is gonna radiate out this enormous energy field, which will impact people around us. So, how you feel is going to impact the lives of those around you. So if you're in a relationship with someone and uh, you want to be in a loving relationship and, uh, you know, maybe you're, you're uh, experiencing an emotion uh, that, that's not so healthy for the relationship, your partner is going to pick up on that. That energy field coming off of your heart, they're going to be able to detect. So that's something to uh, consider here. 
All right, we're going to go back now and uh, wrap up here and just look at a study that we did, which shows the light emissions off of uh, off of horses. And we also did this on human beings as well. But I wanted to show you this study uh, because this was a study that we did uh, that were on horses. Uh, and we wanted to look at how we could use ice wave to relieve pain in horses. So there were no animals sacrificed. Uh, we don't do that. Uh, this is simply taking horses, applying pressure along their spine, seeing where they're in pain, and then applying patches to get them out of pain. And so what we did was we used infrared imaging to measure the light emissions off the horses before and after the patches. And you can see these readings are 10 minutes apart. So these red areas here are areas of inflammation. So this is the infrared light that's coming off of the horse and it's showing us a significant amount of tissue heating that indicates inflammatory chemicals. So if we were to do a blood draw, we'd see that there was inflammatory chemicals here. We apply ice wave, and bear in mind, this was way before X39. We apply ice wave, and only 10 minutes later, from gently stimulating the skin of the horse with light, we get a dramatic reduction in tissue heating, which means a reduction in pain, which means an improvement in uh, the overall health of the horse, the vitality, range of motion, and of course, excellent pain management. You can do that that quickly with a drug uh, as you could with uh, ice wave. So I hope that you have enjoyed this, uh, what's now hasn't been a brief presentation. So I wanted to keep that to about 15 minutes and I customarily ran over. Uh, but I hope that you enjoyed it. And uh, you can see that there is a tremendous amount of scientific evidence for the statement that we are beings of light. We're all connected. We're connected through the electromagnetic fields of our brain, the electromagnetic fields of our heart, the light emissions that come off of our body that travel into space and interact with uh, the world around us, interact with one another. And this is extraordinarily powerful information because it means that we don't have to suffer with pain. We don't have to suffer with low energy or not getting enough sleep um, or any of the other problems that affect us. We can use energy medicine and tools like the patches to heal the body with light, heal the body with energy. And that's incredibly empowering. And it is certainly a message of hope. So again, I want to wish you all a, a happy, healthy, and successful new year. I want to again thank Onyx Cole and Steve Merritt and Gina Merritt for giving me this opportunity to uh, speak to you all today and uh, looking forward to uh, seeing you all uh, in the coming year. So uh, best wishes for a great 2023. Thank you.